I'm here with Tim from Sever, who are the exclusive distributors in Australia of Zaptec. Now, Tim, I understand that this particular charger has a feature that a lot of people will be interested in. It's an AC charger that has V2G functionality built in once the standard is approved. And in Europe, it's already tested by Polestar as a partner of Zaptec and it works with Polestars. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. Not in Australia yet though, because it needs a firmware update sent to the cars once the standard is approved. So when do you think the V2G standard will be approved, Tim? <laughs> that is the topical question of this whole event today. Yes. Uh, anyone's guessing from two months to five years. Okay. Hopefully we'll, it's a bit shorter than yeah, five years. Yeah. One of the improvements are that we have implemented a bi-directional MID energy meter into the product. And we also have the ISO 15118 yeah. standard, the hardware for that. This means that we are very much prepared for the future to do bi-directional charging. So what we need for this is basically the standardization to be ready. And we also, of course, need the cars to be ready for this. There are a lot of cars already out on the market which is prepared for this. They have the hardware on board with their onboard chargers to do this on AC. But we hope that this will get in place soon so we can take our next step and provide bidirectional home charging. Look, it's going to change everything that we do. Obviously, V to G is the catch cry or V to X. Yeah. People want to power Nickel their to homes. Home too. Yeah. yeah. People want to power yeah. their homes. They want to save money. Yes. A lot of the people that are buying the EVs from our research indicate they're looking to save more than yeah. anything. And so they got the solar, yep. they're looking to the battery. Yeah. And maybe now with V to G on the cusp, maybe they won't put the batteries in. Maybe they'll just put the car in and use it as a portable battery. Why not? I mean, even a small EV battery, small, is about 50 kilowatt hours. And then the large ones can be like my MG477, 77 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, sometimes you get up to 100 with some of the more deluxe models. But with this Zaptec Go 2, uh, interestingly, you can wire it up for three phase or single phase. Yeah. And it's got solar integration. So you can use spare solar capacity. Uh, the Sparky who installs it can wire it up with a CT clamp. Correct. So it matches your spare solar if you wanted to, or it can go at full power instead. It can, and it can also switch. The app is is one of the best in the market. Zaptec's been around for a long time. So you can program it so that it can sense shade comes across or let's say cloud cover comes across yep. and it can switch from 22 down to 7 kilowatts and back up when yep. it's got the power. Or even down to low as 6 amps, which is about 1 point something kilowatts. Yeah, okay. Um, what so, else is interesting about this? I noticed it's pretty small yeah. and it's untethered, untethered, which means you can plug in a super long cable if, like me, you need a 15-meter cable to get between wow. your charger and your car. But it also means that even though it's technically untethered, it means you can plug the cable in and out as you wish, or you can lock it with the app and have it permanently yeah. connected. Yeah, yeah. There's a a lot of features in the app itself. Okay. But of course, the other cool thing is minor, but it's yeah. got an illuminated port. Which so is if handy you are coming night. out at night. I mean, yep. it's winter now, I'm recording. Yeah. Yep. And um, the other actually, thing, what about this? Yeah. So, how does it, when it's not winter, when it's the depths of summer, yeah. is it going to de rate and get really slow? No. So, you can see Zaptec's been doing this, uh, these generations, for quite some time. You've got yep. a metal heatsink on the back nice. for different conditions. Is it passive cooling? Tim, it is or? passive, yeah, yep. 100%. Okay. They put a lot of time and energy not just into the design, but yep. also to the installation ways. You've got your built in leveling. Uh, you've got entries from the back and the base. Yep. Uh, obviously, fixing points. And then you've got these terminations here that for an electrician, you can pop this out yep. and you can terminate three phase or single phase. Yep. And it's very, very easy to fit off. Okay. And as a Sparky, it's very important because should anything need maintenance, should anything need adjustment, you want that ease of maintenance and okay. uh, accessibility. Okay, that sounds the other pretty thing, good. Minor things, but you've yeah. got a dynamic display on the front. You've got ah. a two-way or, you know, um, MID meter. Yeah. It's been built into this as well. Yep. Uh, and overall, it just looks good. It just it does really look does pretty look sleek. Look. It's got that Euro Scandi chic look. Yeah. Um, five year warranty. Five year is, warranty. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very important That's to a lot of consumers. Parts and labor. Parts and labor. That's we do. Good. We do an on site uh, warranty of three years for yep. uh, labor. Yeah. And then five year warranty on the actual product. Yeah. Um, okay. That's pretty good. Um, what people will want to know, obviously, is uh, how much does it cost? 
Great the wholesale question. price, because obviously each Sparky will charge a different yeah. amount depending on how much wiring, you might need a switchboard upgrade. So Yeah, the, the actual sure. unit cost, the recommended retail price, around 1800 Around 1800 Okay, yeah. so around 1800 so plus when, Sparky fees. But you get a premium unit, AC, V2G ready, if and when it ever gets like approved properly eventually, yep. and five-year warranty for parts, three years for labor. Correct. That's pretty good. This is kind of interesting, Tim. It reminds me of a retractable garden hose storage. <laughs> yeah. Is it basically the same thing, but that's, just for EV charges? That's the best analogy. Yeah. Uh, you've got your input cable, which is about a meter or so, yeah. and then you've got about 4.5 meters, 22 kilowatt cable. Yeah. It's on a reel. So okay. it's nothing more than trying to neaten up and make it look nice and presentable. Cool. Auto retracting. Yeah, it Space means tests. that really common damage for AC and DC chargers, public or fleet, is people dropping the cable onto the ground. They can't do that anymore with this. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. <laughs> no problem. Cheers. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks, and see you later.